Hi, my name is Gülşah Köprülü. Today I am going to present the changing perception of other in Europe in post-Cold War period. By the end of Second World War, the world was divided into two blocks, as East and West. Eastern bloc was constructed under a socialist and communist ideological regime, far away from nationalism, under the leadership of USSR. And this unity was officially registered by Warsaw Pact. On the other side, Western Bloc signed the North Atlantic Treaty Organization under the leadership of United States of America. The most dangerous threat for Western Bloc at that time was Red Army. Boundless developments in communication and technology since 1980s also started the nationalist and liberationist movements in USSR. As a result, USSR was disintegrated and all communist regimes and Berlin Wall were collapsed. This was the end of Cold War. This also meant the end of Red Threat. This was in fact the beginning of the change of the other perception in Europe. Now the new threat, in other words, the new other was immigrants which were mostly Muslims. In Eastern Bloc countries, life was becoming more difficult day by day. Unemployment increased, and the feeling of backwardness and insecurity boosted many people to immigrate to West for better life conditions. When compared to past, West European citizens became impoverished. As a result, insecurity environment shifted westwards and nationalist movements emerged. Unfortunately, immigrants, in other words the others, were held responsible for economical crisis and nationalist movements emerged in many Western European countries. Now let's mention the concept of nationalism. Nationalism is the total of values and feelings which are developed under the effects of natural, social, cultural, physical and genetic and that are common in a nation's individual. These values and feelings are always reposed on personal benefits. When we mention nationalism, we also have to mention national identity. Anthony Smith describes the key features of national identity as a historical land or a country, common myths and a historical memory, a common mass public culture, common legal rights and tasks that are valid for communities all individuals, a common economy that gives free action opportunity to individuals in their country. Nationalism is not a mere doctrine, it's also an ideology and a way of thinking. It may be a vanishing point or way of ignorance to the people defined as the other. The evolution of nationalism to fascism between two world wars. In the second quarter of 20th century, while industrial revolution was rapidly ongoing in Europe, fascist governments acceded in Germany, Spain and Italy, and nationalist movements reached the peak. Italian system became a model of fascism for many European countries. Besides, Italy, Adolf Hitler's National Socialist Party, acceded in Germany since 1933, and Francisco Franco in Spain acceded as a fascist dictator since 1938. Fascism comes out as a reaction to modernization and enlightenment. Fascism prioritizes benefits of community rather than benefits of individuals. In fact, fascism as an ideology has contradictions in itself. According to Marxist writer Togliatti, fascism is the most reactionist, the most chauvinistic, and the most colonialist elements of finance capital. The most interesting side of Italian and German fascism was that they exceeded with democratic elections. It was surprising for an ideology which exceeded with democratic elections to have a discourse containing violence, to aim to provoke public by the help of visual symbols, slogans and marches. In Germany, Fascism started with Hitler's National Soci Socialist Party's government. Hitler admired Mussolini and he gave importance to his ideas and ideology. He had great respect to Mussolini for his policies. This admiration 
between Hitler and Mussolini caused the close relations between fascism and national socialism. They have the same beliefs and same goals. The only difference between these two ideologies was Hitler's extreme anti-Semitist ideas. Hitler revealed his ideas about Jews in his famous book My Fight. According to him, Jewish people could, should be expelled or immigrated by force from Europe. He defined this race as an epidemic of plague, and he said all military government forces should do anything to eradicate this race without feeling of compassion. The ideas defended by Nationalist Socialist Party departed from nationalism at the point that they didn't accept the nation as a divine value. They just used nationalism as a tool to reach their objectives. The main objective was establishing a new aristocratic order by disintegrating the nation-state structure. Now we are going to talk about the new other red threat. European Union adhered into an integration process by the end of Second World War. In 1952, Paris Treaty was signed and European Coal and Steel Communities Foundation was laid. A supranationalist integration was preferred and a new era started. In 1957, Rome Treaty was signed and integration process continued with expansion till 21st century. So what was the objective of this integration process? European integration aims to reunite nations who live in Europe under the concepts of peace and welfare. On the other hand, they otherize other nations. This othering involves racism and otherizing phenomenon in itself. Before the end of Second World War, in 1944, in Bretton Woods, United States, in the United Nations Money and Finance Conference, Bretton Woods system determined the rules in economic and commercial fields. This system leads construction of institutions such as International Monetary Fund and World Bank. North Atlantic Treaty Organization is an institution established by United States of America, West European States and Canada as a security organization against USSR. At the beginning of Cold War, North Atlantic Treaty Organization was an organization for defense in order to be secure in case of a Soviet attack. At the beginning of Cold War period, in 1947, President Truman put into practice the Truman Doctrine and then Marshall Plan was made applicable to targeting economical development. In 1948, OECC was founded. All these plans had one target, that was creating a powerful Europe against USSR. In 1949, Council of Europe in 1952, European Coal and Steel Community, in 1957, European Economic Community were established, having the same objective, that was again providing a unified, powerful Europe against red threats. After the war, especially France strictly opposed the, to the armament of Germany. In this context, NATO had three main objectives in Europe, keeping USSR off the Europe and excluding USSR, in other words, otherizing Soviet keeping Germany under control and increasing United States of America's effectiveness over Europe. Idea of formation of a European identity means otherizing the ones out of Europe. Until USSR was dissolved, the threat for West was red. In other words, the threat was communist ideology and its unique leader, USSR. After the Iron Curtain was abolished, the other was no more there. Now there is a need to find a new other. This new era's others were chosen as immigrants from third world countries and Muslims. Now they are in target of West Europe and United States as the most serious threat. In other words, the color of threat turned into green from red. From red threat to green threat, the differentiation of the other in the post-Cold War era. By reason of globalization, information media builds an image of Muslims as furious groups of scraggle people who are cloaked or veiled and who constantly performing the ritual prayers of Islam. Not so. Is Islam the reason only result of this dead end 
between east and west. Europe began to search for integrity and identity in itself after the rise of nationalism in the post-Cold War era in Europe. This time, while seeking integrity, mostly Muslim immigrants were excluded as the other. Integration of Europe lightened the traditional structure of identity on which nation-states settled and it became a vote-hunting field for so-called nationalists. Islamophobia, which has been mostly discussed since the end of Cold War, dates back to the Crusades. In 1529, when Turks came to the doors of Vienna, all Christians ran for help to save old world. This kind of mentality is still in the subconscious of Europe. Until the end of Cold War, Muslims were not perceived as a threat. The Cold War's ending means the disappearance of red threat. Now the new threat for Europe comes out as a green thread, in other words, Islam and Muslim immigrants. Due to global economical crisis, European communities experienced a decrease in welfare. In Middle Age, Jews were the scapegoat, but in modern Europe, Jews were replaced by Muslims. This caused a deepening gap between Muslims and Christians. Islamophobia is becoming a bigger problem day by day. This changing perception of threat caused many conservative parties in Europe to sharpen their discourses and pull more votes. In 2008 at the German Bielefeld University at Interdisciplinary Pan-European Working Institute made a questionnaire to evaluate European citizens' point of views towards Islam and Muslims. According to the results of the research, most Europeans consider Islam as an intolerant religion most Europeans believe that there are a lot of Muslims in their countries. Most Europeans believe that Islam is overbearing and exclusivist on women. And they believe that Muslims support terrorism. Europeans feel free to put into words their negative attitude and ideas against Islam and immigrants. Europeans' fears towards Islam and immigrants are increasing day by day, prejudiced actions towards I Muslims caused perception of immigrants as others. In general, Europeans consider Muslims as people who have tendency to violence and terror, so that they accept them as non-integrated individuals to the European community. The reasons for this polarization, which are the results of the rising of Muslims in Europe, are economical factors, social factors, ideological factors, and psychological factors. In conclusion, globalization, expansion and integration of Europe lead to immigration and security problems, fear of loss of identity, fear of loss of supremacy in political fields, the fear of loss of cultural values made Europeans to otherize foreigners and to exclude them from society. Immigrants, most of whom are Muslims, are considered as people who are non-integrated to European culture, people who steal Europeans' jobs and people who degenerated European identity and European values. Due to these prejudiced and unfair attitudes, Muslims are excluded from political and social life and they are condemned to live as others. Thank you for listening.